Hey everybody, Mike here. Today we're going to populate a table view using URL session and the JSON decoder. So um, yeah, let's, let's get started. Show you the steps real quick. Um, so first we're going to analyze and map the JSON to fit your app's needs. So we're going to take a look at the API and uh, kind of analyze what we need to take out of it and how we're going to set that up. And then we actually set it up in step two where we uh, create structs that conform to Codable, or you could also use the Codable protocol, um, but we're going to use Codable. Um, optional, we're going to add coding keys to create readable structs. Now, because the way that you call structs, the, they have to have the same name as the JSON. So sometimes that can get confusing, um, and you don't want to be tied to that. You want it to be more readable, so coding keys can help with that. Um, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to call the decoder in our URL session data tab, which is a fairly simple process. Um, and then we're going to populate the UI with our return data, which uh, you know has, has some issues like when do you call it, when the app loads kind of thing. So um, we have to handle control flow and memory a little bit, um, and like asynchronous tasks, stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we're going to do that in step four. and. Um, yeah, without further ado, let's get started. Let's close this out. And here I have the uh, starter project, which is on my GitHub, and you can download from the link in the description down there. Um, and make sure you download the starter branch, or clone the starter branch. Um, there's also a final branch if you want to check everything out, um, which is obviously what it's going to look like at the end. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is to analyze and map our JSON. And today we're going to use the Pokemon API. And it is at pokeapi.co. Let's bring it over here. Um, here it is. And so what I want to pull from this is um, the name and the types. So if you're familiar with Pokemon, um, each Pokemon has a type that's like an element. Um, so like Bulbasaur, this example right here, um, is a poison and grass type, I want to say. Uh, let's go down, I think it's down here. Yeah, poison and grass. So we need to pull these two types out, and we need to pull the name quality out. And the name is somewhere in here. Not under forms, It's it, that makes it more complicated. There is just a base name. Um, that's not shown right here, but it, it is shown when you go into, yeah, the, the documentation is not perfect, but yeah, see name, Butterfree, ID 12. So we can get that name property easily. Um, and so we have to know how to set up this in a struct, basically. Um, so we know we need the moves. Where's it at? Yeah, the types. So um, I thought Butterfree was like flying and grass and oh, interesting. But uh, regardless, <laughs> we're going to uh, pull the name out and we're going to pull the types out. So um, in order to do that, uh, since this is, you know, everything's kind of staggered here, um, and if, especially if you're new to the whole decoder thing, I recommend using quicktype.io, and I've already um, pasted in the JSON that we need. So basically, what I did was I took this along with the with the end brackets, the end brackets here, um, and then I also took name, and then as you can see, put a comma after that, and then the, the types. It kind of goes, you know, it's like nested within each other. So type, type, um, so here's what we have right here. And so basically we're going to just copy what we need. We don't need the URL out of here. So let's just take this. Well, we're not going to use foundation. You know what? How about we type it out ourselves? So I always find that I'll learn better when I type it out myself anyway. Okay, so we're going to say struct Pokemon. That's going to conform to codable. 
and we're going to have the name quality, which will be easy to pull out. Um, and then we're going to have uh, types. And these have to, like the name here, has to equal what it says in the JSON. So see, like types has to equal types. And um, for that, we're going to say type type element. Which is how um, that's how JSON decides like what they're gonna like an element basically is some is like an array that has you know items in it so that's how it decides that um, and then in the struct yeah you know, we have to nest them as well so the struct type element is going to also conform to codable and then we're going to have let type type typeal really liking the L's today let type equal type which can also get confusing and then <laughs> and then we have struct and then this one is going to be a type type and it's also going to conform to codable. And then all we need out of here is the name. We don't necessarily need the URL. So that's it. Everything is set up here. Now, um, one thing about this uh, is that it says the word type a lot, and it, and it is kind of confusing. So um, this is obviously an array. So if we want to change this to say, type array we can but we can't leave it like this um, we have to put in something called coding keys in the struct so it's an enum and it's called coding keys and it conforms to string and coding key so for the case we want to say type array equals types. So that's how you're basically telling it type array is going to equal types when we're looking for like key value pairs in the JSON. Um, however, we have to complete this and why it's not type element definitely conforms to whatever. Yeah, there we go. Um, equaled when I should have colon. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. So, um, it says it does not conform. And why does it say that? And that is because coding key does not have a default value. So when we do name coding keys for one element, we have to name coding keys for all of them. So our one property is, um, I don't want to use element too much because we already have an element. But uh, yeah, so case name, and we don't have to set that equal to anything. We just have to give it a default value. So the default value is indeed name. So perfect. Um, that we want to, uh, let's, because this says type, 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 type. So let's change this one to element. And then we can call that enum coding keys string dot coding key and case element is going to equal type. Perfect. So that one's done. And then name, name is pretty self-explanatory. Um, even though we're using name twice, it just kind of makes sense. Let's, uh, actually, I don't like using things twice. Element name. And then we're going to say enum. Again, like, having your code be readable is very important, especially if you're trying to get a job, uh, work as part of a team. Um, people being able to see your code and know what it is uh, is very important. Um, 
equals perfect. Okay, so that's set up. Um, now this is all optional again, um, but so we've done it. And it helps, makes it more readable, like I said. Uh, the next thing we're going to do is call the decoder. And so in this starter project, I've already started a URL session data task. Um, you know, I didn't want to go into too much detail in URL session. I have a video on URL session if you want to check that out where I explain it in a little more detail. But um, for this, it's, it's mainly focused on the decoder and then populating the table view. So yeah, let's get started with the decoder. Um, so you see we got the data task with data response error, all that good stuff. So we're going to say if let data equals data. So if it returns something, we're going to hard let, and we're going to say Pokemon equals and we're going to try because it is a um, it does throw an error the JSON decoder so JSON decoder and then decode let me stretch this out so you guys can see it all one line make it a little easier uh, decode and then Pokemon dot self so it's telling to look into that Pokemon thing and pull out what we need um, from the data that is of course this data right here um, and of course Gordlet needs an else so our else is going to be oh, yeah else and our else is going to be a fatal error um, I like to throw fatal errors um, because especially when you're you know learning stuff because that's the best way to learn is for it to stop the app and you know there's no consequences to stopping the app really so you can say error decoding data and then we can print the error which is pretty sweet um, whatever we're going to crash the app anyway so can't we just force unwrap it? <laughs> All right, there we go. So it says this uh, value was defined but never used. Um, well, let's change that. Let's let's actually let's print the Pokemon that we've got in here and. Uh, and the view did load just to test this out we're going to call get pokemon with id one and so this starts at one uh, the api does so it essentially calls the api pokemon id so one should be bulbasaur like we saw in the uh, on the website here so see pokemon slash one the url here so we're going to call that and Let's run it. I already have iPhone 11 up, so it'll be easier and quicker. And great. So we ran it. There's nothing in the, you know, it's not populated yet in the table view. But um, as you can see in the comments here, we have Bulbasaur and Element Poison and Grass. So those are his two element types. And uh, yeah, it's great. So we're already, you know, we've we've used the decoder, URL session, everything. Um, now all we got to do is just populate the UI. So uh, the next thing we're going to do is to create some variables that we know that the you know would be easy for the table view to use. Um, so like an array. And up here we're going to create an array of the Pokemon. So it's going to be variable Pokemon private variable. It's private, you know, might as well private variable Pokemon array and it's going to be an array of Pokemon so Pokemon there we go and then private variable um, so let me explain what I'm about to do here uh, in this uh, in this case when we try to call get Pokemon in the beginning 
it's going to show the table view before it calls this um, because what's going on with network calls it is um, in the background synchronous so it's not going to show up immediately and that's you know that's a long topic for another day um, but what we need to know now is that this will not load and populate the table view in time so um, we're going to create a boolean called loading and we're going to set it equals to true because when we open the app it is in the process of loading and we can change that later uh, I'm also going to create a private variable, say a Pokemon count, because so this API, um, the way it's structured is that um, we have to get the Pokemon with, with the, a specific ID. So um, we can't just pull like all Pokemon and then add it to the array and then display that data. We have to call each one individually. So which means we're going to use a for loop for that. And in order to um, lighten up, I don't want to use like, because this is a free API, you know, you really don't want to abuse it. So I'm just going to say we'll, we'll call the first 10 Pokemon, right? So, well, actually the first nine because that's, uh, that's kind of the, you know, the starting, you know, it's like if you're familiar with Pokemon, it's like Charmander and then his three evolved or his two more evolved things and then the water and his two evolved and, you know, you know what I mean. If you're, you know, a Pokemon person, and I type 19, and I'm at nine. Great. Um, so we have Pokemon count nine, and then we're going to call in the view did load for I uh, in Stride. And if you're not familiar with Stride, it's really useful. It's like a, you know, it's like I dot 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 ten kind of thing where you increment one if you've worked in like C and stuff it's a really readable way to to do like a for loop you know from a number to a number blah blah, blah. so we're going to start at one because that's the id you know we want the bulbasaur id um, and then we want to go to our pokemon count but here's the thing uh, we're going to have to do we're going to have to add one here because of the way the, the, you know, the Pokemon array is going to start at zero, but our call is going to start at one. So we have to, you know, work it, you know, move it around a little bit so that this works properly. And then we want to increment by one. So in here, we're just going to say get Pokemon with ID of I. We're going to delete that line. So now we have to think about how, how is the table view going to handle this. Um, so at the end of this, we want to, after we get this information, we're going to want to append it to this Pokemon array so that our table view can read it. Um, so instead of the print statement here, we're going to say Pokemon array dot append, and we're going to append the Pokemon we just got. So there we go, and a pop-up is going to come up. We're going to require the explicit self. And uh, in order to avoid the, um, you know, retaining of self and, and it's going to cause, or could cause memory leaks, um, we're going to use weak self, which means that we can, instead of saying array, we can say array. And it, if you couldn't tell, that was that was me putting a question mark at the end of self. So there we go, um, and that'll work fine. And when we don't need it, it'll be nil, so we don't have to worry about the crap. Uh, <laughs> um, so now we have the array appended. Um, now, how are we going to set this up in the table view? Um, so in here we need to have a something to display if it's loading and something to display once it's loaded. So if loading is going to be what we say here, if loading, which means if loading equals true, um, we're going to return just one because then we're going to set up what the text looks like here. 
Um, and then else, so that means if loading is false, or nil or something, which it will never be, because it's initialized as true, um, we're going to return the Pokemon array dot count because by then it will be loaded. And um, in order to make sure that that is true, we're going to, after we're done running this, we're going to self dot uh, loading is going to equal false because it's not loading anymore. So the last thing to set up is the almighty cell for row at index path. Ooh. And uh, so I've already got the identifiers linked up in the storyboard. You don't have to do that. Um, we are going to, right here, we're going to do the same thing where we say if loading. And what are we going to return? We're going to say cell.textlabel.text. We're going to set that equal to loading dot dot dot. So user knows what's up. Um, and then else. We're going to let pokey equal Pokemon array, and this is you know if you've worked with table views before, you've done this index path dot row, and then cell dot text label dot text equals pokey dot name, and then for this we might use something that you're not familiar with in the detail label, and I've already set it up to handle detail text labels. And that is something you have to change in the storyboard. So I have changed that already. Um, and we're gonna say pokey.typeArray, but because there's multiple types here, um, we have to map it. So we're gonna use something called compact map. And in here, we're going to this, this uh, dollar sign zero essentially iterates over the array and pulls out the item. So the zero dot element dot element name. And so you can see it's going into, it's, let's see, it's going from type array into element and then down here to type and then into element name. So it's going to do that, and then we have to it says cannot assign. So yeah, that's an array right now, but we can do this joined thing and join the items in the array with a separator. You don't have to use a separator, but for this we're going to say comma space, you know, because it's going to say poison comma space grass in this case down here, right? Um, and then, yeah, so we're gonna, let's go ahead and run it. Now, one thing we haven't done yet, of course, is, um, so it is showing the subtitle. We can always hide that, but we're, it's not gonna be there for long. It's just for demonstration, so whatever. Um, <laughs> and if you wanna hide the subtitle yourself, great, um, but I'm not going to. And um, we haven't loaded anything yet. So we need to update the table view, of course. So we've set up the Pokemon array, um, but down here we need to say table view dot reload data. And if you're familiar with closures and um, asynchronous tasks, you're gonna know that UI cannot be done in the background thread, which these closures um, URL session in general is done in the background thread. So it says to use self here, um, but if you run this, it's still going to give you an error saying that UI stuff cannot be ran from the background thread, um, specifically table view reload data. So um, we have to get into the dispatch queue here. Dot main dot async. And in here, is where we're going to put self table view reload data. And then that should be it if we build and run again. 
it will immediately pop up. Bulbasaur, Ivysaur, Venusaur. So yeah, um, I hope that you guys um, got some good use out of this tutorial. This, this is it, and that's all you have to do. Um, and yeah, if, if you like this one, um, check out my other videos. I've got one on URL session. If you want to use third-party um, third frameworks in order to do this stuff, uh, I also have a video with AlmoFire and SwiftyJSON which makes the JSON parsing process uh, a lot easier, but you also add external dependencies. So, um, you know, you can go online and see there's, everybody's got a hot take on that. Um, stay pretty neutral. It's whatever you want to use. I've used both before. Um, I don't have complaints with any third-party frameworks that, um, that are updated regularly. Um, you know, the people are right when they say that they can cause compatibility issues. Um, but they also, the other people on the other side are right when they say that it's, you know, easier to use those kind of things. It makes your life easier, makes dev time quicker. Um, and a lot of times, and especially in case of Swifty JSON, makes it more readable. Um, so, you know, if you want to check that out, you can. If, if you don't, then fine. Um, but yeah, so this should be the finished product. You can download it on my GitHub in the final. Um, it's the, the final branch. And uh, yep. Thanks, guys. Have a good one.